Hello, one and all. It is me, Stephanie. And before we start to set our soul free, I want to remind you to don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the like, and leave a comment. Also, don't forget to hit the little notification bell so you know when new videos post. As always, I know we won't always agree, and that's okay. Man wasn't meant to always agree with one another. That's what makes our world that God created unique because everyone has a difference of opinion and I'm okay with that. Leave your comments so we can keep the conversation going. Remember, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about our youth. It's about setting our souls free with me, Stephanie. So let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Wherever you are, in whatever part of the country you may be living in, I greet you and say thank you for blessing me with your presence. It is time to set your soul free with me, Stephanie. So let's see what we can be blessed with today. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Jesus, what a wonder you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Wherever you are, whatever part of the country you are in, I greet you in the name of the blessed Jesus. Today we are <laughs> talking about what everybody's talking about right about now, because right about now, that is the biggest thing that is going on. And we are referring to the shooting that happened on Monday. If you have been following me for the past year or so, I had this same conversation last year when we were talking about the Texas shooter. And just like last year, we're going to take a different approach to it. Because while everybody is talking about everything in the left lane, I'm that one person that's going over here to the right lane, which is why I love the ministry my father gave me, because we talk about things from a different perspective. I wasn't big on following a crowd because crowds always got me in trouble. My ministry will not be the same. So let's just dive in. And the topic is how many more have to die it's a simple question that will never be answered as long as i'm breathing on this side of the river because nobody can get it that's one of those questions that has an infinite answer to it nobody really can answer that question but we're talking about how many more have to die how was audrey hale allowed to legally purchase weapons if he was having mental troubles. Now, let me make this disclosure. We all want to be respected. Even though some of us probably don't deserve it, we all want to be respected. Being respected means yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. Somebody asks you a question, you don't say, huh? Audrey, even though she was born a female, chose to go by male pronouns. So out of respect, that is how I will And the word just slipped my mind. That is how I will refer to him in the pronouns that he chose because that is being respectful. Just like if a young person came and said something to me and what? No, you don't what me. You respect me. You either say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, yes or no. So in the same respect, I'm going to give the same respect in the preference that Audrey prefers. There are too many loopholes 
when it comes to purchasing weapons. If you have been keeping up, they want you to think because Audrey identified as transgender that it could be hormones mm -hmm. to blame that he was taking. That has nothing to do with nothing. They are trying to take our focus away from the real problem. How easy it is to legally get a gun. What Audrey preferred to be known as is makes no relevance as to what I prefer to be called. I prefer to be called in the, the she pronouns, although I'm not going to sit up and say that because it's just, just call me what I am. So what Audrey preferred has nothing to do. What she identified herself had not a doggone thing to do with how easily she got these weapons. And, and, it's, and it's something that's going to keep going on and on and on. It's, it's what I always tell my young people. Don't believe the first thing you see when something happens. Because when it first happens, and y'all have heard me say this before too, when something first breaks, when the news is breaking news, it's all about who can get it out first. Accuracy, half the time, don't mean a doggone thing. It's all about who can say we brought it to you first, which is why I always tell my young people, do not believe the first news report that you see because don't nobody know nothing. It just happened. Wait about a week or two when details start to come in, when everybody, you know, everything's died down a little bit and they actually got time to actually concentrate on the investigation, then start paying attention to what is being told. But when you first hear the news, don't believe everything you hear. It's all about who can get it out there first. So, like I said, you've got people trying to find an excuse for why he did what he did. I have not read anything that says he was taking hormones. I just recently saw like a couple of days ago. People already starting on, well, if he was on hormones, you know, the don't, didn't nobody say nothing about no hormones. They just said, he was transgender. Did he say he was transgender? He just said he prefers to be called a he. Didn't say nothing about him transitioning. It didn't say nothing about him taking any hormones, but all because somebody threw the hormones out there. Now we over here in left field again, just like it was in Texas. When the dude shot up that elementary school, the first thing people want to say was he was crazy. He had mental issues. We are so quick to stereotype and slap a label on something we don't understand because we did not understand why he wanted to shoot up some elementary kids. You just slapped him as having a mental issue. I praise God for his mama because his mama right there on TV sat there and said he did not have a mental issue. I stand with her. Don't sit up and label my child because he went off the deep end and did something that y'all don't understand. You're not supposed to just slap a label on him thinking that's going to answer your question. No, it's not. So I praise God for her for standing up for her child, even though she was just as distraught as everybody else for what he did. She was not going to stand by and let society slap a label on her child because they didn't understand why he did what he did. Fast forward to now. We not fits to sit up and slap a label just because it came out that she uh, he identified himself as trans. So what? That has nothing to do with why he did what he did. You don't know why he did what he did. So don't be trying to slap a label and try to, well, that's his reason. It's them hormones. You know, they say when people take them hormones, no, it don't. I haven't seen a research yet. that says when, when you are making that transition, that taking hormones gives you suicidal tendencies. Now all these other medicines for heart, cholesterol, the Viagra's, the diabetic medicine, all those commercials say may cause suicidal tendencies. But I've never heard it for the hormones. So stop sitting up there blaming something that we don't even know if they were taken or not. And even if they were, where's the research to back up that that's what caused it? According to her, according to his parents, he always had mental issues. He was going to their doctor's care for it, but we'll get to that later. So it has not been confirmed whether he was taking hormones or not. And neither do we know if it has, if the side effects are suicidal tendencies. So let's stick with the facts and go with what we know right now. What we know is that he had an emotional disorder and he was already depressed is what they're saying about a death of a classmate. Now, does that have something to do with it? We don't know, but apparently he was already mourning about a classmate, but we don't know if that has any credence, just like the transgender hormone thing. We don't know if that has any credence to why he did what he did. We don't know. We're just going by things that was going on 
in his life up until this point. You know, just like how when a police interrogates someone about something, they're trying to go, let's go back two days. What was what were you doing two days ago? It's like they want to know what was going on before it led up to what happened. So that's what they're doing. They're trying to go backwards to figure out what was going on in his life that may have kind of led to it. We don't know. It's We, we just don't know. So apparently either he did not have or he chose not to talk to anyone to get these emotions out. Emotional disorders is just as serious as any disorder you have. There has to be some form of communication somewhere. And um, from what the parents were saying, he was getting help. What kind of help? Don't know. We don't know what kind of exactly what an emotional disorder he had, but apparently according to the parents, he was getting help for it. So why are we going through yet another deadly shooting in less than a year? We just had this conversation last June in Texas, and now we're going through this again in our own front yard. It wasn't in our backyard because this was right up in our face. This was in our front yard. Now Tennessee is now on the map for all the bad reasons. First, we was on the map for country town, USA, the gospel music, the jazz, the rhythm, the blues, the Titans. Now we're in the headlines for something totally different. Now we're in that category of a city who had a mass shooting on, on, in, in, in the vicinity. You know, so now we're, we're in the news for, for being one of the deadliest school shootings since Texas. That is not a title I want to hold. One research says that in three months' time, this would have been the 19th shooting in three months. 19? Really? In three months? That's just ludicrous, ridiculous. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. So let's figure out about Audrey. Tried to get her some help. Just like in Texas, Audrey sent out warnings of what was to come, except she sent them to a friend. Now, remember, with the Texas dude, he DM'd somebody he did not know. It was a total stranger because the woman came forward saying that she received this long-winded text from this person, but she did not know who he was. So he told someone ahead of time what he was going to do, but who was she going to tell? She didn't know who he was. So now for those who thought what would happen if someone could have helped her, well, now we know in this case, nothing. Her friend, Evriana, got the alarming messages from Aubrey shortly before the shooting telling her I'm planning to die today and that it would be on the news. When her friend saw this, she tried to find someone to help her. So the situation from Texas to now is, what would have happened if the person reached out? Well, Audrey did. She reached out to his friend, Evriana. I don't know how to say her name. But he reached out to his friend. Well, the friend tried to do what she could do. She called the suicide hotline, which is a good idea since your friend is sounding like he's planning to do some harm to himself. But got the runaround. She was then told to call the sheriff's office because they can only help if the person calling is suicidal. What the what? So all those commercials that we see about if you or someone you know are having suicidal thoughts or are contemplating suicide, please call. When this person did it and you're telling her you can't do anything because she's not the actual one with suicide. So that's what you're, that's what you're, telling us that if we know somebody who is having suicidal thoughts or even if it's not suicidal thoughts the way they're talking sounds like they're planning on doing harm if i was to call you you can't help me because they didn't call you themselves is that what is that what you're telling me so a person cannot call if they feel their friend is suicidal the only help is if the actual person is calling really sometimes people reach out to other people for help and you're saying you're denying them that help because they didn't call themselves. I praise God for her friend. I do. Regardless, she did not stop trying to get help for her friend because I know that had to be frustrating. Whatever she was hearing. I mean, we're only getting bits and pieces of what was said. The texts that was sent. We're only getting bits and pieces of it. But whatever she heard, whatever she was feeling, she got on the ball and tried to get her help. And she did not stop. When the doors were shutting in front of her, she just kept going. She kept trying to help her friend. Tried to do all she could, but no one could help her. 
after all that waiting and being kept on hold just to be told they will send someone out to her location later. Well, later was too late. But let's stay focused because the timeline will keep changing until they get all the facts in and have time to look over all the evidence. But what we do know for now is that her friend was on hold for a total of seven minutes trying to find help. Now, I say that to say this. The timeline is going to change because now we're throwing in the mix the time that Evriana called the suicide hotline up until the whole seven minutes up until the shooting started. Now, one report says she was on hold seven minutes when she couldn't get no help. 13 minutes later, it started. Another report says that the shooting had already started by the time she was on the phone. So like I said, it goes back to what I said. You're going to have to wait a couple of weeks until they get this narrowed down because now, because that has been put out in the stratosphere that someone did try to call and warn before he went on a shooting spree. Now that has to be submitted into evidence and they're going to have to figure out, you know, from the time they call to how that's all part of the evidence now, because somebody called about this particular person because Audrey himself called this person. Now they got to look into all of that and figure out the timeline from the time the first call came to the time the shooting actually started. All that's got to be put in this timeline. And that timeline is going to take a while because you got a lot of factors you got to remember to, to, to put into it to figure out from when it started to when it was over. During their short interaction, Audrey made it clear to her friend that she was ready to die. On my blog, I will have the screenshot of the, the text that, they, that, they, that they've allowed released to the public of what it actually is. And it goes line by line, you know, showing him to her with everything that was said. I'm not going to read all of that. You can read it when you get to the blog so you can see for yourself. But it goes back to what I said about what was going on in his life that he felt this was the only way he could get peace. It's the same question I asked about Texas last year what was going on with the texas shooter that on his birthday he decided this was the day i was going to die what was going on in audrey's life that he decided that this is the day i'm going to die this is the only way that i can find peace in my life is if i take my life out of existence what was going on what do we what do we keep missing that more people are choosing death by cop as the only way to get their peace back? What is it that we're missing? We're missing something. Too many of these people that go in and shoot up places, their end game is suicide by cop. That's what their end game is. They plan on doing whatever they're going to do because in the end, they do not plan on living past today. And their resolution is suicide by cop. And anybody who knows anything about anything knows all you got to do is basically point a weapon at a cop. Boom, boom. Much less shoot at him. So Audrey knew how he was planning on leaving this world. Audrey knew what he had to do to accomplish that goal. And the police obliged. I mean, you can't blame him. You're pointing a weapon at me. You're shooting. What am I supposed to do? So getting to understand Audrey, what we also found out was that he had detailed maps of the school, several writings. Basically, Audrey knew what he was about to do and had it written out how he was going to do it. Then we learned he had weapons training and came to the school ready for a shootout with the police. Now, a question that I have that was answered on how he was able to get the weapons when it was documented that he had emotional disorders. This is where this gray area comes in. Because, you know, because of HIPAA, you just can't tell people what people's issues are. You know, that's the privacy part. You know, your issues are your issues and the doctors alone were you, the doctor and God. Nobody else is supposed to know about it. So if he was going to buy weapons, how would the gun shop know that they're being treated for a mental and emotional disorder? Which means they probably don't need to be owning a weapon. How would they know? There was no... I guess what Tennessee would call the red flag that we don't have. There was no red flag to let them know this person should not be issued a weapon. So how would they know that she, that he couldn't get one? So apparently Tennessee does not have what they call a red flag, which I heard the governor mentioned this morning. I'm like, I wrote this. I did all this last night after a week of research. I did all this last night. And then I hear it 
this morning when he was on the news trying to backtrack. And I, and I thank God for the confirmation because I'm like, I want to give people information, but I don't want to overwhelm people. But I'm glad I put this part in there. Tennessee does not what they call a red flag law that would let a judge take someone's guns for a short while when they could pose a threat to themselves or others. It's the same thing we always hear when it comes to priests, when you got nasty people doing stuff and confessing it in the confessional. And the priest is like, I cannot tell you that psychiatrists, doctors, psychologists who have people to come and confess things to them. But because of the client attorney privilege or client, whatever privilege, they cannot disclose that information. Again, God gave me confirmation because this morning on Channel 5, you had a psychologist on that. That says legally they cannot disclose what is talked about in one-on-one sessions with a client unless they feel like they pose a threat to themselves or someone else. That answered my question. So there is, I ain't going to say a gray area. There is a, I ain't going to say loophole necessarily, but there is a tick right there. The yes, you can sit up there and confess everything you want to confess to me. But the minute I think you're about to go do something that could cause injury to me, to the world, or to yourself, I don't know. I'm, I'm about to call somebody. So at least we now know that apparently the doctor she was he was seeing, there, probably, there was no issues. Or the doctor didn't say anything. Or the doctor didn't feel that Audrey posed a threat to anyone. But how much you want to bet that law will slightly change because those are the ones who are causing the most damage to human lives. And yet there is nothing legally the law can do to prevent it. A lot of shooters, mass shooters, people who go have some kind of mental disorder, even if it's diagnosed or undiagnosed, there's something going on and they're allowed to legally purchase these weapons. They're allowed to legally do this. Illegal. Now I'm going to say that to say this. If you remember all the times that we talked, the one thing I told you when I talked about depression, and all this falls under suicide, depression, all of this falls under the same umbrella. You won't know how we're feeling unless we tell you. Audrey is a perfect example of that. You don't know what's going on in our head unless we tell you. What did I also tell y'all once before? That sometimes we'll leave the door open slightly ajar to ask for help because a lot of people don't know how to ask for it. They're in so deep. They're in so much trouble. They're in so much distress, so much stress. Things are going on. Too many voices in their head. They don't know how to ask for help. So sometimes we'll leave a door cracked. We'll say something that'll spark a reaction from you, hoping that you would ask the right question. So we can tell you what's going on. What did Audrey do? Sent a text to a friend. And I'm sure he had plenty of friends because we're talking about, they knew each other from, when they were younger. So I'm sure between that friend, when they were younger up until now, Audrey had plenty of friends. He could have texted about what was going on, but he chose her. And you see what she did to try to help. That was that inch of the door opening, trying to get help. But apparently Audrey was too far gone in the plan on what he was going to do that. It didn't, it didn't make a difference. What, what, what she said. You know, it did, or she didn't say the right thing to make Audrey stop what he was about to do. So if you wondered how he got in, shout out the glass doors to get in. I don't know about the glass doors at that school, but I know in other schools, those glass doors are extremely thick. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if they're bulletproof, but I know they're, they're thicker than like regular glass, but with the right kind of weapon. You can shatter, you can shatter any glass. It doesn't matter what the door is. You can shatter anything if you got the right high powered weapon. Weapon. We think we're safe until something like this happens and we find out that we're not safe at all. Schools, churches, workplaces. You think you're safe until somebody comes in there and proves to you wrong. Audrey was 28, a freelance graphic designer and illustrator that had a website that showed his artwork. He has never been in any serious trouble and is described to be sweet, nice, and shy. So what happened for him to decide that life was no longer worth living anymore? Did he reach out to anybody else before Evriana? Because clearly he was trying to get some form of help. He just didn't find the help that would change his mind. 
And now I say that because anybody who tries to do something, you see, you hear about the manifesto, you know, you hear about that all the time and rarely do you hear, or it comes out later about how they try to reach out to somebody like in Texas. He sent that DM to some total stranger. Audrey's case, he actually reached out to somebody that he knew, which means it sounded like he was tempted to change his mind, but the right thing wasn't said or whatever the case may be or whatever was going on overpowered what his friend was trying to do and he went along with it anyway. So it, the question becomes, could Audrey have been stopped? March 27th, 2023, Audrey Hale decided this was the day he was going to die. It had been planned for a while. We figured that out already. They've told us that it was planned for months. So it had been planned for a while. And that day was the day he was going to carry it out. So the question is, did that day mean something special to him? Or was it just picked at random? You know, normally when they do something, it's, it's a day that means something. Not all the time. But for the most part, it's it's a day that means something to them when they when they go off on this on this tangent. He got dressed in camouflage with a black vest. I think he said he had camouflage plans, but like a plain shirt. He gets to the school, shoots out the glass, enters, armed with three different guns on the day that this terror began. Audrey had a plan that he planned not to live through and knew the consequences of shooting at the officers. Again, anybody or everybody who chooses suicide by cop knows all they have to do is either point the weapon at the cop, walk towards the cop when they're telling you to freeze, stop, stay where you are, or if you want to make it immediate, shoot at them. Audrey knew what he needed to do. Again, his end game was suicide by cop and he knew all he had to do was shoot at him and they would give him what he wanted. We also learned that he legally purchased seven firearms from five local gun dealers, which three of those weapons was used in the attack. But even his parents felt he should not have owned any weapons because he was under a doctor's care for emotional disorder, which goes back to if Audrey wasn't displaying anything that made the doctor have concern, what can the doctor do? So apparently in the sessions with the doctor, whatever was going on or whatever they do to, to, to check on people to have these disorders, Audrey was fine to him. He saw nothing that would indicate he needed to warn somebody about his condition. So the question is, what is an emotional disorder? It's described as a mental health condition that can affect your mood like clinical depression or a bipolar. Can it be treated? Yes. Can a person start to feel better? Yes. Can they have a normal life? Yes. If it's caught early enough, if they take the medication, because then that's the other part to it. You can diagnose somebody for days, but if they're not taking the medication that you prescribe, what else can you do? We got to remember Audrey was 28, a full grown adult. You can't make adults do nothing on the job, much less try to make an adult do something about their life. So what do we do now? What do we do now? Really it's already started the protests and the peaceful marchers. I work downtown in downtown Nashville. I work right near the legislative plaza. I mean, near the legislative plaza. So when the shooting happened on Monday, I already knew what was coming. I've worked downtown long enough to know. I already knew what was coming and doggone it, they came. But they were peaceful. I really didn't realize they were out there unless I took my headphones off and I hear the chanting every once in a while and they were playing music. But other than that, it was, it was peaceful, which is what it needed to be. But we need to do a better job with the gun law. But we also need to look into the mental health aspect and how we can get a warning when somebody is trying to buy weapons that would either inflict harm or death to themselves or others. That's that little red flag law. That's, but that falls, but then again, that falls under the HIPAA thing too. So I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to have to do something because this can't keep happening when there's probably something we can do probably not necessarily to stop it, but to slow it down, to, to get in front of it, to, to figure out what we need to do to, to, to change their mind or whatever. But why does somebody always have to die 
for the powers to be to realize, hmm, maybe we need to look into that a little bit closer. It never fails. Every law that we have, every rule that's in the school, every employee handbook you have of the do's and the don'ts is because somebody did something. Because if you're at work and you read the employee handbook, do not do this, do not, and you're in your head like, who in the world would do well? Somebody did it that they had to put it in the handbook. Just like when these laws are made and they think at the time when they make them, it's going to help. Nope. They don't know it's not helpful until something happens. Now we got a mental disorders and people being allowed to purchase weapons. And it doesn't necessarily have to be mental disorders because you still got convicted convicts still being able to purchase weapons legally. There's a flaw somewhere and we have to figure out what it is because too many people are legally purchasing weapons that should not have them or so we say, but somehow they're still getting them legally. There will be changes. There has to be because what they have implemented has backfired on them. And now they have to be held accountable for it. All these lawmakers, all these people who are sun go ho about these guns and stuff. Now you're going to have to backtrack because there's a wait, <laughs> but wait, we did not think about those who may have a mental disorder. We didn't think about those who probably under conviction or something should not be able to purchase a weapon, but somehow are able to legally get it anyway. And they use their real name. It's not like they use an A-list. I've seen it. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Some people have been able to get weapons with their real name. That is on file as being on probation that should not possess a weapon, but somehow they still legally are able to get one. There's flaws and we need to figure out what we need to do to fix them. But what we need to do is keep it peaceful, but get the message across that they need to do something to ensure the safety of our babies. So the March that happened shortly after the shooting and then the March that happened yesterday, the March that happened yesterday was just off the chain. They were everywhere. I mean, I'm thinking they're over here in the legislative plaza. I turn my head and there are more people right there on the Capitol. I'm like, well, doggone. They were everywhere. But again, it was peaceful. When I say peaceful, I don't mean like they were quiet. No, they weren't. They were doing their shouts and yells and cheers and stuff. I mean, peaceful meaning nobody got hurt. There was no violence. They did what they had to do and they kept it moving until they came back that night. I ain't got nothing to do with that part. During the daytime, they were fine. We should not be worried if our children will come back home the way we left them or if they come home at all. They should not feel terrified to go to school worrying if this is the day that they may not come back home. One of the things I saw on the news this morning that one of the, the, the high school kids had, I loved it. It was a sign that says, I don't want to be a hashtag. How pure and innocent is that statement? When you got the babies out here saying, look, you need to do something. These babies are just as emotional talking about, I should not have to feel scared to go to school. I should not have to be scared that while I'm in school that I think I'm going to be safe. And if I'm not, what can I do if someone comes in there? You know, I don't know. Now this school, glory to God, had an active shooting class, which is why they said the teachers should be applauded because they took what they learned and saved more lives. What about these other schools? Do any of them have active shooter classes? Do we think now they need to have actor, active shooter classes so they know what to do? Let's figure out what the common denominator is. Texas, Tennessee, common denominator, elementary schools. Why? Well, let's think about it. Middle schools, you got officers walking around. I don't know what they call them. Security officers, resource officers, whatever. You got people in uniforms with weapons walking around. High school, you got them walking around. Colleges, you got the campus police walking around. Elementary schools, nothing. There is nothing. And up until the Covenant School, I thought after Texas, when schools were making changes left and right of, because of how easily he got in, I thought all schools were like the ones that I know kids I know go to. You have to be buzzed in, period, point blank. 
and I've seen it done. If you don't, you got to be buzzed in, which means you got to show an ID. They got to clearly see your face. You got to know what you're up there for. You do not get in. And the most they do is they come out the office and talk to you from behind the locked door. So you still won't get in the door if you don't state your business of why you're here. And it's almost like trying to put a passcode on the computer after so many tries. Alrighty, let me call the police to remove you from the campus. The only thing I see that's the common denominator is there's no officers on the campus walking around. Now, I see them in the afternoon, but that's during when the kids are going out for the day. They're going home. Where are they during the day? Let's start having some police cars sitting right there in the front of the school, having officers patrol the school. Let them let these shooters know there is police presence on here. You're not fenced to pull that foolishness up here today. Let us figure out what we can do to change their minds in a different perspective. Like you're seeing officers walk around. You're seeing this cop car ride around. You're seeing police inside the building. There is police. There's, there's a police presence there that you probably won't even get to the door, much less through it, if you tried something. But let's remember 1 Thessalonians 5 and 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, which means don't return evil with evil. Return it with good. They are wanting these protesters to get violent so they can take away from the trouble they've caused to focus on the anger of the protesters who have every right to be mad. Y'all seen it done before. Protesters, there's something happens, fight, blah, blah, blah. Now the news is now focused on the angry of the protesters, how they turned it into a violent, and they're taken away from the reason of why the protesters are angry. Don't let man fool you. Don't let man take your mind off of the main problem how easy it is to get weapons. It's going to happen or it's going to continue. It's already happening. It's going to continue. They're going to keep trying to throw something out there to keep you, to make you deter away from what the issue is. Perfect example, Donald Trump. He got indicted. So what? We're talking about these babies that died. We're talking about these innocent souls who have gone on to glory because someone felt that their life wasn't worth living. Let's stick with what's more important. And I'm sorry, it's not him. So don't return evil with evil. You return it with good. The peaceful protest, getting your point across without causing the scene, because that also takes away from what you're trying to do. We already have violence, which is why you're there. We don't need to add more violence to it, which takes away from the whole purpose of fighting for these babies that cannot fight for themselves fighting for these families who's lost these babies who just right now can't get up off the floor because they're still screaming why their child is dead. We need to fight evil with good. There is more good in the world than it is evil. As much as you don't want to believe it, there is. People just need to get up off their butts and do what they need to do. Quit letting evil take control because it's, it's running rampant because nobody's stopping it. We need to stop it. Romans 12 and 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Are you seeing the, the common thing in there? Are, are you, you hearing what God is saying? The common thing? Don't do evil with evil. Return it with good. Overcome evil with good. You, you're, getting the, you're getting the thing. That's how we've survived for this long. Every time evil revved its head up, you had those that could stand strong, stand up for the good and shut it down. That's what we need to do now more than ever. Shut it down. This one means don't get distracted from evil that you forget that you're there to spread the good. Everybody knows that there's that one person or it could be the child that'll river dance on that nerve so bad that you go off on the deep end. I mean, they just river dancing on that nerve. Just having a field day with the feet just tap dancing all up and down that nerve till you just explode. We all know people that do that too. They know the right buttons to push to get the right response out of us. And then we're sitting there looking like an idiot because we knew better. We knew what they were trying to do and we let them win. This verse is telling you don't get distracted because there will be more evil that will come out that will try to distract 
from what we're trying to do. That we're trying to defer you worrying about the gun laws. You were you refer about you keep talking about these kids that passed away and these adults that risked their lives that are now no longer here. Trying to re- defer from the families who are suffering, who are still trying to figure out why. Do not let evil distract you. Let me tell you about the goodness of God. When this first happened, let's talk about how Tennessee looks like they, they really have egg and manure and stuff all on their face. When the woman popped up in the middle of the broadcast who came to visit a friend who is a survivor, her and her child are survivors of a school shooting and she went plumb off. Like, I came here to visit a friend. Why are we still having this conversation? Why is this happening again? She let the Lord use her. She was polite. She didn't cuss. She sat there and tore into him. Why are we still going through this? And this came from the mouth of a survivor who thought, you know, let's go to Tennessee. And now look, look what Tennessee did. Tennessee done made this woman go off because now she's asking, why am I going through this again? Why is this still happening? I loved her when she did that. I'm like, I'm glad she didn't let that because she could have just walked on by. You know how most of us do now. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to have my face on TV. And then I'm in. Mm-mm. She said, uh-uh. She stepped right in front of that camera and started going off. And she praised God for her. Because when you survive something like that, you come to town and doggone it, you're seeing it again. That's what you're supposed to do. Get up off your butt and say something. And she did, asking the right questions. Why are we still having this conversation? Why is it still even able to still be happening? She had every right, every right. So what can we do? The time is now we remember why we are here and what God is asking us to do, to be that light in someone else's darkness. That's why that is the motto for my ministry. Be that light in someone else's darkness. I didn't pick that out of a hat. Is what I've been doing for over 20 years. My mouth is big enough. I can speak for the continent if I had to. And I've done it. Not for the continent. But I've had to speak for other people. Because they couldn't. Or they were but nobody was listening. Oh you gonna listen to me? Or I had to stand in for somebody. Because they were trying to get their point across. But nobody was seeing them. Oh you gonna see all my fluffiness. You ain't going to ignore me. Rudeness is what we will not do. I've done it. I'm still doing it. I advocate for my babies now. Like you heard me say, I stand up to their own families. Like, no, we're not going to do that. Not right here. You got something to say to them. You say it to me. We're supposed to be that light in someone else's darkness. Those who cannot speak for themselves. Speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. To stand in for those who can't stand on their own. To put into motion for those who don't know where to start to make a change. We need to speak not only for the victims and the survivors, but the one who caused it as well. Because I teach my youth, every action has a reaction. Which means if we could stop Audrey, the minute we knew something was wrong, would it have changed something? Maybe, maybe it doesn't. I hate doing the woulda, coulda, shoulda. But in this case, because somebody actually tried to help him. I have no choice but to play that game now. The woulda, coulda, shoulda. Because somebody actually tried to help. Would it have made a difference if somebody tried to help? Somebody did. And the answer is no. It did not help at all. But it wasn't the friend's fault. The friend did everything that she could possibly do in her power. It just wasn't enough. But we need to speak for the ones who cause the problem as well because something is going on. We have failed them somewhere to where they think that the only way that they can get peace, the only way that they can just say end it all is to kill themselves, but to take people with them. You know, it's bad enough that they want to take their own life, but when they want to take other lives with them, that's 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 wrong. Somewhere we failed them and we're not looking at the signs. Everything is not something you can get from a book. I'm not knocking no psychiatrist, no psychologist, no clinical people. no. Do- I'm not knocking nobody. That's what you went to school for. But there are some things you cannot learn from a book. You have to live it. You have to be around it. You have to see it for yourself. 
not see it and go look at the book and see what that goes with. No, it's called life. You need to live it where you know what's going on. I can tell when somebody's getting ready to pop out. I've been around it. Sad to say, me and my young dumb days, been around it long enough. You can tell when somebody is about to break. How bad they break, I don't care. You about to break. I'm out. And I'm telling people along the way, you better follow me. You better come on. Something about to happen. Something about to happen. We got to go. Some things you just cannot learn from a book. And now in this day and age, like I told you, if we want you to know, you'll know. You'll see the little signs they have in the books, the withdrawals, the this and that, and the blah, 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 blah. And in some cases, like with Audrey, you won't. Great artist, happy-go-lucky. Even the people that they talked to that knew him, nobody said nothing bad about him. Everything was, he was always happy. He was shy, had a childlike spirit. There's nothing wrong with that either because I got one. Doggone, I'm always be a Toys R Us kid, Scooby-Doo nut. Never growing up. That doesn't mean I'm going to go out and shoot up somebody. So let's not throw, let's not slap that label on her either. Him. My apologies. Him. Let's not slap that label on him either. That got nothing to do with nothing. If they want you to know, you'll know. They'll have those signs that you see. Withdrawal. You know, always sitting by themselves. Blah, 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 blah. But then, most of the times they don't. In this day and age, they don't. You don't know until they snap. And that's where you get the people on the news. I did not know. They never said nothing. They never showed that there was ever a problem. We've got to think outside of the textbooks. Start looking with your eyes. That's what God gave them to you for. You know when something's wrong. You've been around people enough to know when something is not right. Your spirit tells you something is not right. We need to start speaking up because the souls that we save could be our own. Because we don't know what's on that person's mind. We don't know if we're part of their plan. We don't know if they plan on taking us out with them, even though they told us about it or mentioned it or what. We don't know. We need to start speaking up. But like I said, we need to start speaking up not only for the victims and everything, but we need to start speaking up for these, for these people that cause the problems. Because there's something that's going on that we're missing. We're missing, we're missing it somewhere. And this is the second time we've missed it. We're missing something. There are a lot more Texas shooters. There are going to be a lot more Audrey's out there until, unless we figure out what it is that we're missing. We're not seeing something that is telling us something is wrong. And it starts with us. You know, that's something that we do with the people we see every day. Like I tell my young people, when you go to school, it could have been ha 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 funny the day before, but we don't know what your friend is going home to. If they even have a home, we don't know what their life is like when they leave school grounds. As long as they're on school grounds, they're probably happy because they're away from the house. They're away from the parents, they're away from the family. They're fine. But we don't know what goes on when they go home. And when they come back the next day, what was a nice little friendly joke isn't funny anymore. Now they're ready to kill. That's why I tell my young people, be mindful of your friends. Be mindful of who you hang around and who you let hang around you. Always be vigilant. If you see something is wrong, if you feel comfortable stepping up to them, say something. Ask them, are you okay? You don't seem like your chipper self. I do it all the time. Whether you're young, whether you're old. I did this. I, actually, I did it today with a coworker because something wasn't right with her. She wasn't crazy or anything she actually she wasn't feeling well but it's because i know how she normally looked and when she stopped to say something to me i stopped her miss and it's like oh no 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 what is this what 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 happened you wasn't looking like this five minutes ago come to find out she was sick okay you need to trolley your butt onto the house and i made sure she got to the house goodbye she calls me her work mother so i went into work mother mode get your crap get out this dough text me when you get home so i know you made it okay it's the, we have to be vigilant. We have to look just like I tell my young people. I don't know what's going on unless you tell me, you know, I can sit up here and advocate for you all day long by what I think is going on, but I don't know what's going on unless you tell me what is going on. What is the problem? What can I help you with? Then I also let them know, you know who your friends are. You know how they are on a daily basis. The minute something comes and they walk in that school building and they don't look right, you need to figure out what it is. 
if you feel comfortable. If not, tell somebody. One of the other things I told them is we didn't have anonymous tip lines growing up. What was that? Who did who did that? We didn't have anonymous tip lines. And if we did, I didn't use them. I can't tell you how many times I done walked up to a teacher. Look here, that fool right there did this at this time with this person over here at over there. And then they did it again. I didn't care. Wrong was wrong. You knew you were wrong because I know you, you knew what you did was wrong. You made somebody feel so friggin' bad. Heck no. You got to go. But now they have the anonymous tip line where you can call in and let somebody know something. And you don't have to worry about the fear of retribution, I guess is what the young people call you know, where you don't have to worry about the fear of somebody figuring out it was you and now they're coming after you. You got in the tip line. Our biggest thing that we need to pass to our young people is this doggone social media. How many times have we seen violence happen and they posted it on social media well before they did it? So many people saw it. Nobody thought to tell nobody. Nah, it's just that person. They do that all the time. And then that one time when it becomes real, I didn't think they were going to do it. Well, that wasn't your choice to make. You should have said something regardless. If they start talking more and letting people know what's going on, it'll deal to some of this, this, this foolishness. You know, maybe it'll make them find some way to get some kind of help or listen to someone or they talk to the right person who gets them the right help that they need. We need to do something, which goes back to this 911 call. Hold on. Let's go back to this thing again. One of the other things that came out with her friend um, trying to get help, the friend trying to get help, was they said without an address, they wouldn't know where to go. What? That's, that, that's what we're going to use? Without an address? How many times have we heard police can track your phone? Track your IP address. She gave you his name. And out of those three options, you couldn't track to find out where he was? Really? That's what we're doing? Like I said, some things are about to change. Some things are about to change. And once again, people had to die before they saw that there was a flaw. Don't get me wrong. You never know if there's a flaw until something happens. I just hate it when people have to die for you to realize that there's a flaw. There's a flaw. And we need to figure out what it is. So why do we need to include the ones who cause the problems? Because somewhere in their life, we failed them badly. The right help was not provided. The right medication was not given. The signs were just missed or ignored. Whatever the case all these combined has yet let another shooter feel death was the only way they could get peace. And that's all it is. Death is really only the beginning. But in death, you don't have to worry about being judged. You don't have to worry about putting on a facade to be liked by people. You don't have to worry about if you have friends or not because you're dead. That's peace. Why are so many people choosing death as the only way that they can get peace? What is going on that we are missing that they feel that is the only option they have? So as we fight for stricter gun laws, we also need to fight for better ways to help those with mental health problems. Fixing either one of these will save lives and possibly stop the next shooting. Now, will it actually do it? Don't know. But if you can get ahead of something, you normally can stop it or slow it down to where you can get the right help. I've done that too. Some things I have no problem staying in my lane. Some things I know I can help with. Some things I know I cannot. The things I cannot, I do the best thing I can until I get the right help in to take over. Now, that's so much I can still do. It's not like, okay, what? Well, I don't know nothing about that. I can't help you with that. I've never told nobody that. I do the best that I can with what I know to get them far enough ahead to where I can bring in someone who actually can give them the help that they need or can actually put them in the direction to where they can go get the help that they need. I've done it. And sometimes I've been right along with them because they wanted me to. I went right along with them. 
Whatever they said to do, I looked, if they needed me to look something up, I'll look it up. What they tell you to do? Hold on. Let me tell you what that means. Right along with them. I've even told them, when you call, this is what you need to say so they know exactly what it is you're needing. Because sometimes they can make the phone call. They can reach out. But because they don't know exactly what to say, they're not getting the right help that they need and deserve. We need to step these babies are counting on us. Our children, grandchildren, seniors, because the seniors are not exempt from all this violence. All these voices that cannot speak for themselves are depending on us, those who can speak, those who have a voice. Like me with the podcast and the blog, those who have a platform to speak for them to get something started, even if it's just a conversation, which I do plan on having with my young people, because one thing I loved and that they seem to like is when it came to certain issues that popped up, we sat and talked about it because that is the one time that I let them open up. What is going on? What is your train of thought? What is it that you're thinking? And they knew that they were going to get a straight up answer from me. I'm not sugarcoating it because of your age. Now I may make it age appropriate, but I'm not going to dance around the answer. No, you need to know exactly what is going on and why you need to know exactly the answer to your question, because I don't need you asking somebody else who's going to tell you wrong. And now I got two ticked off people walking around. No. If the young people come to you with questions, answer them. Be honest. They need to hear it from you and not social media, not TikTok, not YouTube, not the other friends who don't know no more than what they know. They need to hear it from someone that they trust and don't lie to them. The last thing you want is to betray a young person's trust to where when they really get into trouble, they do not come to you anymore because they don't trust you. Now is the time where we need the trust of every young person because we want them to feel comfortable that if something is wrong, they can come to us. If they hear something is wrong and it has nothing to do with them, but they overheard something, they need to know they can come to us. Because a lot of these young people know something's going on, but they don't know who they can talk to. They don't know who they can trust. We've got to let them know that we are here for them. We have got to let them know that if something is going on, talk to me. Now, in the same breath, like you've heard me say before, don't you go off and act a donkey. Don't you sit up there and cause 5,000 hells of Cain because then that destroys everything because now you done made them a target because now everybody knows that they said something. And there goes that trust again. The young people is our insight to what's going on. The young people are the ones that we're going to have to count on to reach their friends, which means if they don't have the right information, they're not giving the friend who needs it the right information, which is why I say do not lie to them. Do not sugarcoat it. Make it age appropriate, logically, but don't sugarcoat it. They, they know because if they don't get it from you, they can find their answer. So you sugarcoating it makes it seem like you're lying to them, that you're still treating them like a child when they have seen more probably going to school, in the school, leaving the school than we've seen in our whole childhood. We got to give these young people a lot more credit. They're under a lot more stress than we know about. We need to start being there for them. We cannot keep losing children because of our failure because we're not talking to them, because we're not looking at them, because we're wanting someone else to do the foot. No, we were here to bring souls closer to God. But in his time, not by man's, in his time. And we need to work on that because we're losing too many young people because of confusion, because they don't understand something. They don't feel that they have someone they can talk to. So they got all this pent up frustration and they have no way to vent we have got to do our job i can't do it by myself and i don't try to i do as much as i can when i can which is just about every day that's why i send little 
DMs to my to some of my to some of my kids, some of my youth, some of my followers. They get something from me at least twice a week. How you doing? What's going on? Sometimes they just get a kissy face. That's something I'm thinking about. At least they know that I'm thinking about them. What's going on? Some of them reply back, not doing too well. What is it? Don't make me leave my job. What's the problem? Little gestures like that show that someone cares. And it's a genuine care. It's not, okay, well, you need to have a stiff upper lip. You need to have some snappy comebacks. No, you can't. No, that's not, that's not the answer. That didn't work in my generation, which is why I'm jacked up now. That didn't work then and it's not going to work now. Talk to them. Find out what's going on. Find out what you can do to help. Sometimes just listen to them is all they need because it makes them feel better that there's someone that actually cares, that is actually listening. Just like with adults, sometimes they just need someone to listen to because they know what to do, but because they're so frustrated, they can't hear what God is telling them to do because they're so frustrated, just like an adult. Sometimes they just need a listening ear so they can get it out their system so they can do what they know they need to do. Again, everything ain't in a textbook. Some of us have lived lives long enough and been through a lot of stuff that we should not be standing here, that we know what to look for, especially when it comes to children. Children are not adults yet where they can change, you know, they can walk in and give a fake expression. You know, where they can fake it like an adult. No, they can't. When you know what a child looks like on a day-to-day basis and then they come in and they look different. Or you even know what an adult looks like on a day-to-day basis and they come in and they look different. Nope. Stop it right there. What's going on? Sometimes they just wait for that person just to ask. Sometimes that's all we got to do. So again, I say be that light in someone else's darkness. And as these stories unfold, do not get distracted from the bigger picture. Do not return evil with evil. Good always wins. Always. Regardless of what you heard, regardless of what you've seen, good always wins. Don't let them take away from the big picture. Stay on point. Stay focused. Stay vigilant and let us do more to protect these babies. If you follow me on the blog, all these, the information that I got, I have included every link where I got information from. I told you when I research, I research, I don't play, which is why it took me a week because I waited till I got more and more information. And if I need to do a part two, I will. If somebody wants me to, as we get more information in, I have no problem with that. Because I want people to be informed of what's really going on, not what they want you to know, not the bits and pieces that they're telling you. No, you need to get the bigger picture so you can get a better understanding. Again, we will never understand why Audrey did what he did. Because he's not here to tell us. A manifesto can only tell you so much. And that could have been, depending on when he wrote it, that could have been what it was at the time. But again, he picked that particular day to do what he did. For all we know, that day meant something, but we'll never know. So again, all the links where I got information from will be there. Read for yourself. Like I tell my young people, don't take people's word for stuff. Do your own research. Look for yourself. Read it for yourself. My interpretation is going to be different from yours. You may read something that you already had in your mind of what was going on, and then you read it. You're like, oh, okay, now I get it. That's why when I research, I research. So every link that I found information in that I even mentioned, even if it was a sentence, is going to be on, it'll be on the blog because I know I can't do it on a podcast. It'll be on the blog where you can click on it yourself and read it for yourself. But we need to do better. We really need to do better. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come here today to say thank you. Father, we thank you for just letting us see another day. Father, we ask a blessing for the Covenant School. Father, we ask a blessing for everyone within the school, around the school, who's been to the school, who even know the school. Father, we just ask for a blessing today, Father. We bless those souls who were delivered to you before their time. 
Father, we also ask a blessing for Audrey. Father, we don't know what was going on in his life for him to think death was his only option. But Father, I pray that you show mercy. That you heal his soul, cleanse his mind, Father. Father, I ask that you touch the next one who is thinking of doing something similar. Father, I ask that you step in and help them. Father, lead them to someone that will give them what they need, that will give them the answers that they're looking for. Father, that will give them the attention that they are so desperately wanting. Father, we are losing too many children to senseless acts. Father, and it hasn't has doesn't to do with the gun control. It does with the person who controls the weapon. So, Father, we ask that you bless those who have the power to make the change but are too busy bickering amongst themselves that they are missing lives that are ending because of it. Father, bless all those under the sound of my voice who may have been touched in some form of fashion because of what happened. For all I know, there's somebody on the line who was a survivor of themselves and that this is just bringing up memories of what they had to go through. Father, I ask that you bless them, Father. Wrap them in the arms of understanding. Wrap them in the arms of comfort, Father. Wrap them in the arms of peace to let them know that you've never forsaken them, nor have you ever forgotten them. Father, I pray that good will conquer over evil. Father, I'm already claiming the victory in your name, Father, but we have got to have more of your children step up and step out on your word to help save these Babies, there is only so much these children can do. Somewhere the adults have to step in and we are failing them, Father. So I ask for guidance. Father, tell me what I need to do. Tell us what we need to do to help these babies make it through another day, to help stop the next one who thinks death is their only option. Father, bless the police officers who in the line of duty have to make split to split decisions that may not always end well. Father, some of these officers are also suffering from what happened on Monday that need counseling themselves. So Father, I ask that you pray with them, Father. Bless them. Put your hands on them, Father. Get into their soul, Father. Let them understand that what they did, they felt they had to do, Father. Please console them, Father, because they are struggling just like any other survivor that's out there. They are confused. They are frightened. Just like every other survivor that is out there. Father, we ask that you bless them. Because their job is still to protect and serve, which means they're going to have to go through this again. But right now, Father, they need you. We need you. Now more than ever. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you because we know that this is far from being over. Father, I pray that a resolution comes out of this. I pray changes come out of this. So we're not having to go through this again. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we give you all the honor and glory. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay positive. Don't return evil for evil. Let the goodness of God shine through. Because there's someone else out there who needs our help. There's someone else out there who may be thinking and doing the same thing and is just waiting for someone to ask the right question so they can stop them. Be mindful. Be safe, stay blessed until we talk again.